the Hollers and Hills of West Virginia, it's Heavenly Hills Homestead with another episode. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, Ryan, and uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting some bushel gourd seeds and some long gourd seeds. All right, uh, just kind of wanted to do all the gourds together. Um, so let's kind of see what we got uh, in the way of, of bushel gourds and uh, and everything, and see what we're going to start this year and try to grow. Uh, last year was my first year at growing. Uh, bushel gourds and long gourds and let me just tell you at the end of the year I ended up hating gourds and I do mean hating them I mean just absolutely despising the gourds um, they're not an easy thing to grow I mean they're just really they're not they're not they're not they're not uh, there's a, and, okay. and uh, I say that because they're just a pain in the butt. Uh, I mean, if, if I'm going to be honest with you, that's what they are. They're a pain in the tail, all right? Um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to, uh, those are not for me, these are for um, the guys in my group. All right, so put them up. Mr. Dog, no, these are mine. Hang on, what's the deal here? 218, 218. 218. Okay. All right, all right. All right, so, um, I gotta go get my other seeds. Be right back. Okay, guys, we're back. So, um, I got my long gourds from last year, uh, 83 inch was the biggest i got because i broke it off in my hand it was nowhere near, near done growing guys i mean absolutely nowhere near done growing made me sick to my stomach i don't even like thinking about it that's what happened with my long gourds and after i broke this one off my long gourd trellis broke i was growing straight ones but then they would get the witch's nose on them and then the nose with the end of it the bottom part of it would turn black and then they would die i mean and they would be six seven foot long when this would happen and then you know i grew a really crooked one that looked like a c and so i took that and turned that one in and it was 80 some inches long no it was 90 some inches long but when they measured straight in the line it was 47 or something like that um but if they had measured the curve, it was like 90. So anyways, um, I got I got the seeds out of my 83 inch, which was the one that I thought would be good. And I grew several of them. So guys, if you've not checked those videos out, go back to last year and kind of look through my videos and you'll see like the long gourds and like some of the updates on them. I grew some really big ones and nice ones and they grew really quick off of, uh, off of these seeds. And I only had four of them uh, that I bought and three of them survived. So, I mean, it, you know, and I paid like 20 bucks or something like that for three seeds. It was, you know, crazy. But anyhow, um, 
I have these, and so I want to grow these. Now, what else do I have? Well, my I consider him a really cool dude and a really good friend. Um, up north, uh, it, Rick Jolivet or Jolivet, however you want to, however it's pronounced. Um, he sent me these right here, and uh, it's one fifty five point seven zero Lauric unknown to open and uh, it's a world record in 2019 so I got three of those from him again thank you so much Rick those are going to be used this year I'm only growing mine for a backup because I've only got room for three of these and there's three of these here I'm going to grow two out of the three all right because I want to and then if I, if they both grow and do good, then I'll keep the one seed back. If they don't, I'll germinate it. But I'll grow these for a backup to those. So the, mine are just for backups. If you're looking to buy some longboard seeds, let me know. All right, guys, I'm selling them really cheap. Um, you get uh, uh, five of them for 10 bucks um, plus $5 shipping. So it's $15. It's cheaper than what I got. And I actually... Guys, if you don't know, everybody that's bought seeds off of me this year, I give extra seeds to. Everybody. I don't publicly go out there and just tell that to, but everybody that buys seeds from me gets extra stuff. Whether it's the seeds from these, or you know, if you buy a bunch of them, I give everybody extra seeds. I just do. I've had several people say, hey, I ended up with extra seeds. Uh, do I need to pay you for them or send them back? No, 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 no did that because you bought them off of me and i appreciate it that much and i'm shoving it full of extra seeds all right guys i do that for everybody so if you're watching and you've bought seeds off of me and you've gotten more seeds than what you've uh, purchased please comment down below and and you know tell about your experience for me so maybe others will buy from me because when you buy seeds from me you're not only supporting me and my growing but you're supporting other veterans that are in my group that may need, you know, maybe they're growing inside, right? And if they're growing indoors, they don't have a place outdoors, then and maybe they don't have a lot of money to spend, then I can, you know, go to their local Walmart online, purchase a bag of dirt or whatever from their local Walmart, Roll King or whatever online, then they can go there and pick up their bag of dirt and then take it home and use it to grow. So those are some of the things I do. I also use it for the shipping uh, to these veterans so they don't have to pay shipping. I'll pay the shipping to ship the seeds to them or whatever. So, I mean, it, it, that that's what you're supporting. And without you guys supporting uh, me and buying seeds off of me, then I have a very hard time supporting other veterans uh, that are that are like me. So, anyhow, um, we got those for the long gourds. And uh, here's what we have in the way of bushel gourds. Um, Steve Connolly was very, very, very uh, gracious and sent me two of his um, two packages, okay, of his um, 470.5 uh, uh, bushel gourds that were the world record in uh, in 2020. And so uh, we, we have those, and there's two of them in there, so we're going to plant those. We don't need both packs, though, so we'll put that pack back there. Um, and then we have um, Dave Davis's um, bushel gourd that we're going to grow, uh, and, and we'll start. We're going to start them. And then we have uh, browns, and the browns do really good. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, my experience with the bushel gourd last year. So, the bushel gourd was also frustrating. This is why I came to the end of the year and was very, very upset and, and just kind of like scratching my head and, and, and mad about, um, about the gourds, right? And the long gourds gave me the fit at the beginning of the year and continued on through to the end of the year. Whereas the bushel gourd looked like we were doing good. The, the bushel gourd probably had the biggest area in the patch, which is really a bad thing, right? I did not want it having that much, but guys, a bushel gourd, it goes crazy. Let me show you long what gourds. Goes. Long gourds will, uh, let me put that there. Long gourds. They are like this on a trellis, right? You got your trellis, and it's like this. And here's your plants right here, right? 
and then they grow up and do this number right and they're all doing this and they cross each other and, and do all kinds of crazy mess right and then, i mean you get you can't hardly see which ones are going where you know and it just it just becomes such a woven mess of crazy vines and stuff right i mean that's literally what it looks like when a, when a longboard gets done lg longboard okay <laughs> and then they get up here and there's nowhere else for them to go and they then they come start coming back down right and then they and then they're doing all this again, right? So it's a big, big mess. One reason why I wanted to put a platform up there on top of my thing. So this right here is what I want, right? I want it like that and then run me some posts back down there like that to secure to, okay? But that is eventually what I want it to be. That's neither here nor there right now. That way they can come up, over, come on the you know, on top of the platform and then hang down off the platform. But that's a long word. This is what I had last year and it snapped in half, folded in, buckled everything. Two days before, listen to this, two days before we had our patch tour. My patch was looking beautiful, the long words were looking great. I was happy with it, I could deal with it. Two days before I broke my state record. Well, what would have been these new state record because it was 90 inches was the state record with the, and I know for a fact I would have had over 90 inch because the way it was growing it was just phenomenal and I would have had over 90 inch and I broke it so and then the day after I broke it there was so much rain that that, that day and the next day that it just collapsed the whole trellising now bushel board so I had I'm going to kind of show you what my patch looked like last year this was a pumpkin plant Pee. Here was a pumpkin plant. There was a pumpkin plant. And these were every 10 feet. Every 10 feet I had a pumpkin plant. Um, and then I think I ripped out middle, a couple middles. So there might have been two of them that had maybe 20 foot in between of them. Then I had my bushel gourd. Let me go ahead and draw that with a blue marker so we can kind of tell him. The bushel gourd went that way. Then I had a pumpkin plant and a pumpkin plant. Pumpkin, pumpkin. Here's what happened. So I said, well, I'll grow that long gourd because it's got the most amount of space, not on purpose, but what my thinking was is if I let it grow this way, okay, diagonal kind of in the patch, it's still center lined with the pumpkins. If I grow it that way, I can horseshoe all these vines or pitchfork these vines back like so, okay? And you can see what's what's starting to happen there, right? And then these ones I can throw forward. And then, but what happened was completely different. So this thing gets huge. And it starts getting these going like this, these tertiaries. And I mean, they're everywhere. And I want to cut the tertiaries off. Well, guess what? You can't cut the tertiaries off. Because guess what? Guess where your females are? On your tertiaries. So you cut your tertiaries off. Your secondaries and your main, they don't produce a bushel cord female. So you don't get one. Here's the other kicker. I was August. August. before, And the plant was huge. You can go back and look at the videos last year. The plant was a giant plant. I bet you that plant had five to six hundred square feet easy and compared to everything else. And so out here on this very, very end, it got out to like this. It was touching my fence. Yeah, the property fence over here. 
it was touching that fence over there in that corner where that blue propane tank is. Here's the blue propane tank right here. Okay. It was touching over here and it had roots or secondaries and tertiaries all along the fence. Some of them through the fence and everything, right? I ain't kidding you. But out here, like right out here, it was in the yard, about five foot in the yard, somewhere around in there. I set two of them one evening and they took off. And within just three days, four days, they were the size of a softball. Had all this plant behind it, pushing it, right? I mean, it was a massive plant. It was just crazy. Um, it completely took over all these pumpkins over here. Okay, I mean, they're, I mean, you just, I had pumpkins growing. And you could tell there was pumpkin vines in there, but the long gourds was taking it over. Tried to take over this one back here, which was a 2261 Schmidt right there. It was a 2261 Schmidt. Anyhow, when the day came for the um, patch tour, nobody had said anything about anybody else in West Virginia growing a, uh, a bushel gourd. And so I was under the impression that I was the only one and it didn't matter really how big it was because I was going to turn it in, whether it was an ounce or, you know, 200 pounds, I was going to turn one in. I was going to have a state record. Well, they get up here, wrote a ball. You sneaky, you sneaky rascal. I'm, I'm still, I'm still <laughs> shaking my head at that because, because I had no idea. Nobody said anything until they get up here. And Rodeball looks at his daddy and says, Well, Dad, is that about the size of, is either one of them about the size of yours? I said, Huh? Yeah, yeah, Dad's grown one. What? Nobody said nothing. Nobody said nothing about nobody else growing one. What? What's going on here? So, as soon as they left, I looked at them both, and I X'd one off. I mean, I just cut him out. A month later, at 101 pounds... This one decides to take a crap, and he craps to bed. And I didn't have any other bushel board to take off and go. So there I was. I didn't have nothing. I tried to pollinate some just so I could get, like, maybe a, a, a month grow off of it, right? Or three, four weeks off of one, right? Nothing. Not a thing. Couldn't get none of the rest of them to pollinate. Ended up ripping the plants out, ripping it out, and just letting the rest of them do their thing because it was just, it was garbage by that time. It wasn't, wasn't worth anything. So that's how my long gourd and my bushel gourd season went last year. So I'm very frustrated at uh, bushel gourds and long gourds. So anyhow, enough of me yammering. Uh, I'll show you quickly how you do this thing. So bushel gourds, long gourds, all the same. And I will be uh, soaking them in um, in a paper towel uh, in a baggie. Okay, guys. So let me get that get that all prepped up, and then all right, guys. So we got it all set up. All of them are the same. I'm gonna show you real quick with one set of long gourds, or one set of bushel gourds, and one set of long gourds. So let me kind of show you what we do here. 331 Browns. If you're wondering what those clippers are for, you can take fingernail clippers if you so choose. I am going to use one. I don't need all four of them. I'll tell you what, to, I'll, I'll do all four and I'll use one of them for a, for a graft because I got a couple more of these browns over there. Here's how you do this. You can take fingernail clippers if you want or you can take something like this. Cut your ear off like so. Gently. Remove that tip. Well, not tip, but ear. Remove that one. See what you got going on here. Kind of use your fingernail there. Yep, there we go. See the growing tip? That's what you want. You want to see that growing tip right there? 
and then you can kind of, if you want, maybe just trim just a touch more of it off. Not much, guys. I mean, very little. Barely biting it, okay? And you can see there, we're good to go. So, that's the 331 Browns. I'm going to show you these um, long gourds. Do them the same way, and then we're going to get off of here. And I'll finish this up and put them in an incubator and, and uh, head to bed. So, same deal. Just be careful. Remove the ear. Remove the ear. little funky it's growing crooked so when they grow crooked like that watch where you're cutting because if you cut instead of cut if you were to try to cut straight through there like that you'll cut the growing tip off so you got to also cut crooked the way it's growing just like so all right now let's see here you should expose the growing tip See? There's the growing tip. Now, can you imagine if I would have tried to cut like I was going to? I'd have cut that growing tip plumb off. So here's how you do it. You just take your towel, fold it in half, place your seams, fold it in half again, open your bag, For all of them. You can also soak them just like watermelons or pumpkins or, or tomatoes. Later. So guys, that's how you do long gourds, bushel gourds. And uh, I hope you guys have learned something. And guys, we appreciate you watching. And we're going to see you next time right here in the Hollers and Hills of West Virginia. forget to smash that like button hit that notification bell don't forget to share thank you good sir you're welcome and subscribe